Number four, Proverbs chapter four. This is four weeks in a row we've been in the book of Proverbs. And uh, you know why? Because I need wisdom. Uh, you know why? Because probably you need wisdom too. And uh, you know the titles, Proverbs chapter one, how to avoid the pitfalls of life. Proverbs chapter two, staying straight in a crooked world. And last week, wisdom is wonderful. And then tonight, please get wisdom. Please get wisdom. I remember as a young man, I got out of the Navy, started a roofing business, flat roof doctor. And uh, I got a job in Norfolk, Ghent area, and they had sort of a four or five story uh, tall building. And I'm up there and you go over the little retaining wall, you go on there. And I was replacing some of the roof and there was some dry rotted wood, dry rotted, and it was dry rotted. And I'm putting some new rubber roofing on there. I have my torch and I have my rubber membrane and I have some rubber roofing material. And I know I've got to warm this rubber material up with a torch. I know there's dry rotted wood right there. I know I need to be careful. And well, I said, I'll just do it real quickly. I, yeah, I'll just do it real quickly. And you push this, you put this thing, and my oh my, did that start on fire? And uh, it's, it's burning up a storm right there. And what do you do? You cry, you pray, you ask the Lord to help you. And, and I remember I, I tried to throw rubber on there, tried to stop it. I even got my hand, but some of the rubber, like the tar, if you ever had hot burning tire get on your hand, ah! And at the end of that, I'm thinking, man alive, please give me wisdom, Lord. I don't want to ever do that again. I don't want to ever get one. But in reality, we all have times in our life where we can look back and we say, man alive, I don't want that to ever happen again. I need wisdom. And how many of you would agree with that? And uh, we're going to look at here in Proverbs chapter 4, and the writer of this proverb right here is trying to encourage you and encourage me Please get wisdom. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. We'll read the first seven verses, and let's do it this way. Let's all read it together in unison, all together in unison, starting in verse number one. Ready? Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no wisdom. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what version I've got, but it sounds like I got the wrong one tonight. It's going to be a long night, a long night. Let's start over. I'm going to get the right version out. Here we go. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. That verse 5, you can see it. Get wisdom, get understanding. And you can see that Solomon is saying, please get wisdom, please get wisdom. And this is a, a chapter reminding you and me that I need wisdom. And not only do I need wisdom, but the people around us need wisdom. Please get wisdom. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for loving us, Lord. And Lord, thank you for giving us an opportunity to get wisdom. Thank you for the book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs, Lord. And I Pray that you help us to open our hearts to it, help us to hide your word in our hearts, help us to learn some things, and help us make some decisions in our life to get wisdom, Lord. And Lord, I pray that we're filled with uh, moms and dads, seniors and teenagers, and of all ages, Lord, uh, that are walking in wisdom. We love you, Lord, and we need you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Please get wisdom. Well, you, you see that verse number five, get wisdom get understanding. You know, a lot of people have knowledge and accumulation of facts, and really, wisdom is taking that knowledge and using it in the fear of the Lord. 
And the, saying, uh, the psalm is saying, get wisdom, get understanding, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. The good news, as we think about this, please get wisdom, is wisdom is available to you and wisdom is certainly available to me. The book of James is considered uh, by many the Proverbs of the New Testament. And in James chapter number one, it says, if any of you lack what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. And the opportunity to get wisdom is available for you, it's available for me, it's available for the young, it's available for the old, it's available for people who've got money, it's people available for people who don't have money, it's available to all of us, amen, for, uh, that, that should have been a resounding amen for all of us, Brother Randy, we all are struggling in that area right there. Do you remember in the book of First Kings, then Solomon, he becomes the king, and it's one of the great stories in the Bible, in First Kings chapter number 3, uh, verse number five, it says, God said to Solomon, ask what I shall give thee. Imagine God coming down to you and saying, ask what I shall give thee. And you know, the king of kings and lord of lords, he's, he's able to give you whatever. And what did Solomon say? And I, I, this is an amazing verse. In verse number six, Solomon said, thou hast showed unto thy servant, my father, great, what? Mercy. And I, and I put that in bold font right there. God, God had showed David great mercy. God is a merciful God. He treats us so much better than we deserve to be treated. And then it says, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept uh, for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And remember, this is Solomon. He's talking to God. He says, and now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that it cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Now, I read that quickly. You're not seeing that, but... As Solomon's saying that, he's, he's very humble. He's saying, boy, I'm little. I, I, I need help. I'm but a little child. I don't know how to go in or come in. I need help, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need wisdom, Lord. That's what he says. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this? Thy so great a people. Now, we've heard that story. We've read that story. We've heard preaching on that story. But what would have you asked for? What would have I asked for? And, and by the way, what are you searching for today with your life? And that, that's important because wisdom's available. The wisdom that Solomon had, uh, boy, you can have a piece of that from the word of God. I can have a piece of that from the word of God. Wisdom is available to you. Boy, please get wisdom. Please get speech. And the Bible says, and the speech pleased the Lord. God said, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. And we think about that. What a glorious, glorious thing to get. Wisdom. Oh, boy. Have you ever noticed somebody who needed wisdom? One of my sons, and uh, boy, he's not in here, he's in the patch club right there, uh, got a hold of one of my wrenches and was in my inside with one of my wrenches, metal wrenches, and uh, there's a window right there, and just decided to see what a wrench would do on a window. And through that, and you know what the wrench did? It went through the window. And you know, I wanna look at my son and I wanna say, please get wisdom, don't do that. That's not very good. In our Bonnie House, Dale House, Levi, I was sitting there and my Bonnie Dale House is over in Virginia Beach and it's in a place called Acredale, three quarters an acre and you'd sit in the living room, there's huge window and we'd have the little uh, recliner right there, the little love seat and you could look out in that backyard and it feels like you're in a forest in the middle of nowhere and I'm just sitting there minding my own business and little Levi, he's got my S, my 
S-Wing Hammer. My, my wonderful, glorious S-Wing Hammer. And he's a little guy. He's, little, you know, he's 17 years old. <laughs> and he comes up over to that window, and he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. But he starts taking the hammer and banging on my window. You don't remember that. I remember that. You know, it was only two years ago, Levi. But, but you know what I'd say is say, please get with Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, often in life, we notice other people needing wisdom. But in reality, you know what? We need wisdom. Everybody needs wisdom. But let, let's zone in on ourselves that we desperately need wisdom. I can look back and I tell another, maybe not so funny story, but I was roofing. And I got a job in Virginia Beach, and I can picture the house. I can picture where it's at. And uh, a flat roof over the kitchen. And I was excited. It was a good job. I tore off that flat roof right there, and uh, I took off the plywood. And I ran out of time that day. The plywood's off, and I looked at the, you know, the, the, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to wait till the next day, and I'll cover the roof the next day. This is early 2000s, and that's, I had me a Nokia. Do you remember the Nokia cell phones right there? And it's original, it's like I got me a, a cell phone. And I remember, you know, I didn't worry about it. I, I went home and I lived over in Portsmouth at that time, and it was two or three in the morning, all of a sudden my phone started ringing. It scared me half to death. Hello, Matt, flat roof doctor. And uh, a lady was frantic, she was angry. A wild animal has come into my house. And what do you do? What do you do? So a wild animal crawled into the house, somehow got in there, and is crawling through her house. And you know what? I needed wisdom. I'm never going to like leave a roof like that without covering it again. Funny a little bit, but, but in truth, there's so many areas we need wisdom with. I, I remember reading about um, a man in Bible college. And the dorms, he's just a young man. And in the dorms, next to the dorms, there was an apartment where there's not, not Bible college students, people living there, but people are living there. And the, the man told a story about how he's walking home, going past the apartment, and there's a young lady out on the balcony, and she's dressed immodestly. And, and the lady begins to call out, hey, hey, you, you young fella right there, you cutie right there, I want you to come up and visit me. And you know what? A decision right there can change your life for all of eternity in a, in a split moment right there. And you know what he said? No, absolutely not. You know, praise the Lord, he had wisdom not to make a terrible decision in his life. And so in our lives, we desperately need wisdom. Look at Proverbs chapter, uh, well, I, I, I made a list and it's, it's hard to go through it. Have you ever looked up like the word wisdom in just the book of Proverbs? It's over and over again. I'm, I'm only going to touch a smidgen of it, but Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction. The book of Proverbs is to give to, given to you to know wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, verse 20, Wisdom crieth without. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. And, and going through the verse after verse after verse, it's almost pounding. There's pages of, of uh, proverb verses on wisdom. By the way, I like the last one, Proverbs chapter 31. She, the virtuous woman, openeth her mouth with wisdom. Wisdom's not just meant for men. Wisdom's meant for men and women to the glory of God the Father. And we all desperately need wisdom. Can I beg and plead with you? Please get wisdom. Say that with me. Please get wisdom. One more time. Please get wisdom. Now, as you go into Proverbs chapter 4, look with me at verse number 10. You'll notice this. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. In verse 11, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. And then notice this. I have led thee in right paths, right paths. And that, that's, that's interesting. There's good paths, there's a right path, and there's a wrong path. 
And uh, to illustrate that, and we'll hold there, I remember, oh, when I was a kid, I, I joined the Boy Scouts for a brief period of time, and I got a few of the uh, Boy Scout patches, and I went to Boy Scout camp as a kid. And up in the mountains of Colorado, we went up there, and there's Pancake Mountain, and we camped out there, and our Boy Scout troop and our troop leader says, time to go climb Pancake Mountain. And one side of the Pancake Mountain is a, it's very dangerous. You go, go straight up, and we went around there. And as a young kid, I decided to go on my own a little bit, go a little bit farther and faster than people. And I remember going out there, and my, my troop leader was back there, and I remember climbing out on this ledge that was like this, and there was a straight, if you fell, you were gonna like long ways. And I remember going out on the ledge, not knowing exactly where it goes, but I remember getting halfway out there and realizing this is not good. Uh, I don't wanna go out here. And so you can't turn around on that small ledge and so trying to crawl back was very, it was the wrong path. It was the wrong path. I got back safely, but as I was young and, you know, a little uh, neat, young man needing wisdom, amen, Leviticus, yeah, there you go, uh, needing wisdom, I remember I decided that I was going to climb down that face of that mountain. And so I did. I went down there, and, you know, a kid doesn't think much about the dangers of it, and I climbed down the face of that, and I went down pretty fast. I had no problem. And I got down to the, the base of that camp right there. By the way, I should not have gone down there. I just went ahead, I just went, I made it back to the Boy Scout camp. And none of the other Boy Scouts are around, it's just me. So I just wait around, I'm twiddling my thumbs, and nobody's there, nobody's there. And so I'm hungry. And so I found some potatoes, and I got a little Coleman uh, grill with the little propane bottle, and I turned that thing on. It wasn't mine. I don't know whose it was, but I remember starting it and started grilling up some potatoes there. And, I mean, it was light, and then it wasn't light. It was dark, and waited and waited. And eventually, a long time later, here comes the Boy Scout troop, and the Boy Scout leader was very angry at me because when I went down that, there was another kid who followed me and got stuck. And all of a sudden, I led him down the wrong path. He followed me. Then they had to rescue that poor kid. And you know whose fault it was? My fault. But you know, there, there's two sides. When you go down the wrong path, you often lead others. You often lead other people down the wrong path. You say, oh, I'm safe. Well, and truly, when you take the wrong path, it's nothing safe about that. Look, look at this in verse number 12. Look at this. Well, look at verse 11 again. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths, right paths. When thou goest, when, now we're going to come back to that phrase. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the, that's the wrong path. And go not in the way of evil man. Avoid it, avoid that path. Pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and they, their, their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. There's a lot here. I'm reading it very fast. You know what? You have the opportunity. You can read it again later tonight, okay? But look at this in verse number 18. The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. There, there's two different paths you can go on in this life. You can go on the path of the just. You can go on the path where the, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A just path, a righteous path, a, a godly path. And all, oh, I've, I've thought about that a lot today. The best path is just to be dead center in the will of God. There's nothing better with uh, being in, right in the dead center of the Lord's will. And when you're dead center in the Lord's will, there's joy, there's peace, there's long suffering. But the way of the wicked 
And there's many, many in the world today, holy mackerels, that are walking that way. And they, they're, they're, it says, is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. And I, I could spend the next hour, two hours, three hours, and telling you about the wicked world that we live in. But you know what? You already know the wicked world that we live in. And many people follow that path to their destruction. They follow that path to their doom right there. Hey, we don't have to. I was a young man, 19 years of age, got gloriously saved. And and I remember looking at a man named Mike Goodall and his dear wife and how they they didn't have much money, but you know, they had the Lord. They had the joy of the Lord. And, And I looked at them and their love for God, their love for the Bible, their servant spirit right there. And I said, man, that's what I want. That's what I want. And they pointed and said, the Bible shows you that path, the way of the just. And praise the Lord, it wasn't perfect. I I don't say I I, I was perfect in following that path of the just right there. But I got on that path. And if I stepped off that path for a moment, I got back on quickly. And I'll tell you what, now, 48 years of age, I like my life. I like God's blessing. I, I feel like I'm walking in light. I'm walking in the light of God's holy word. And God has blessed me. And I, I'm not saying that because I'm great. I'm saying because God's a great God. And, and praise the Lord, we have something glorious and wonderful walking on that just path. The way of the wicked, the way of the wicked is as darkness. And I've told this story many times, but that young man, I remember the young man, he wanted money. And uh, he said, if I had $100,000, all of my problems would be over. And I, I remember distinctly talking to this young man, all of my my problems would be over if I had $100,000. And I remember asking him what he would do. I'd buy a, a truck. And uh, oh boy, by the way, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? And, and you know, I remember that fella and I feel bad for him, but he was consumed with money. I need money. And he got in with the wrong crowd and armed robbery, prison, problems, difficulties, and that path is darkness. And, and he didn't have to go down that path. By the way, young folks that are in here, I man, go to the path of the just. Go to the path of just. Use the Bible as that lamp unto your feet and light unto your path. It's glorious. By the way, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14, enter not into the path of the wicked. And then look back at 12. Look back at 12. This, this is the interest. When thou goest, when thou goest. In other words, you and I get to choose which path we go on. Individually, I wish I could take and twist your arm. (laughs) I wish I could sometimes. Uh, You're going to do this. But in reality, God's given us a free will. I I can't force anybody to trust Christ as their Savior. And I can present the gospel. I can plead and beg with them. But in the end, they have to trust. They have to make that decision with the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness. And, And we have to say, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they have to choose that. They have to accept Christ as Savior. Now, I wish I could force them, but I, I can't. And, and I wish I could, I could force some time and lead them in the path of the just, but in reality, everybody makes a choice. You make your choice. I make my choice. Choose the path of the just. Choose the path of the just. Look at verse number 20, if you will. This is the third part. Please get wisdom and uh, choose the path of the just. And this is the third part. Uh, Well, look at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Say that phrase with me. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Okay, keep them. Keep the words. Keep wisdom. It's saying to guard your heart, thine heart. My, My son Amos, the other day, came to my office, he comes to my office every day, probably three or four or five times, and he he wants to sit on my lap. I read him a book today, oh yeah, and he chose out a book, and it was about mule mule deer, and there was little mule deer, big mule deer, and uh, it was a really interesting book, and I told him a wild story about this angry big, well, you don't want to hear about that, so that's fine right there. Uh, But uh, he came in, and then all of a sudden, he noticed a golf ball, and on the golf ball was a heart, and he's looking at that, and I said, Amos, that's a heart. He says, and he'll repeat after me, he said, that's a heart. I said, yeah, Amos, that's a heart. It's a red heart. He says, yeah, that's a heart. And I said, no, you know, Amos, 
inside of you, you have a heart inside of you. And he's a, a heart inside of me. So he starts pulling off his clothes, looking for his heart. <laughs> it's hard for him to understand the concept of a heart inside of him right there. Uh, but our heart, our innermost part of our being right there. And uh, it says, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Look at verse 22. For they are wisdom. Thou, they are life unto those that find them and health to all the flesh. Look at verse 23. and read, read verse 23 with me. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart. Keep thy heart. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. In other words, it's just saying, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Oh, I got me a safe one time. You know, all my Nettesheim valuables. And uh, it was in my Bonniedale house. Miss Nettesheim, you remember this. And uh, had the combination right there. And the safe's about this big. It's heavy. And inside, you're, you're able to anchor the safe to something if you want to. And there's from the inside, you can do that. But, I mean, it's a big, heavy safe. Who would, who would ever take that safe? All my extreme valuables. Uh, I don't know what I had in there, but it really, trust me, it wasn't too valuable, okay? Uh, but I had my safe and valuables in there. And uh, I did not anchor it down. I did not screw it down. I didn't anchor it down. I didn't think anything of it. And I remember we came home that day. Remember that day, that day the day that uh, we'll never forget. And you, you, you walk into your house and there's a door open. And you walk in there and you begin all of a sudden notice that things are not right. There's things missing in our house and there's piles of stuff. And it sort of like dawns on you and you realize somebody's been in my house. Then you start noticing that things have been stolen. <laughs> And, you know, to find out everything, go through your whole house, you, you feel terrible that somebody's been in your house that did, did that to you. Uh, you feel horrible. But you know one thing they did take? They took my safe. The bums? <laughs> they took my safe. And you know what? If I would have anchored that safe down, it sure would have been a lot harder to take. And I didn't guard my safe. And, you know, sometimes we don't guard our hearts. We don't guard our hearts. A, a young, young man or a young woman, or a young woman in today's world, there's a lot of bad men out, out there that'll try to get your heart. And they're not people that you want anything to do with, non-Christians that love, don't love God. They may even be Christian, but don't love God. You, you wanna guard your heart. You wanna have uh, some moms and dads that help protect your heart. And you wanna protect your heart, realizing one of the biggest decisions outside of getting gloriously saved is who you marry. Amen? And that goes for the, the, the young men, too. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. You're married. Still guard your heart. Boy, uh, one man, one woman for one lifetime. Man alive. I want to be uh, have a great marriage with my wonderful, wonderful wife. I want to guard my heart. My wife guards her heart. Do you, do you understand? There's so many different areas that we need to guard our heart. There's a, a, a song we sing, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. What does it say? Prone to leave the... God I love. And so we have to guard our heart. Now you can do that in a lot of ways. Reading your Bible sure does help. Boy, studying the Bible helps. Having, uh, uh, walking in the spirit and praying and asking God to, to protect you and help you. And uh, boy, going to church certainly does help. Having the proper friends helps. There's a thousand things to help. But when, let's anchor our hearts to the Lord. Let's guard our hearts. Let's guard our hearts. Let's guard our hearts. Amen. But also there's something else there. Look at this. This is interesting. Look at verse number 24. Put away from thee <laughs> a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Not only guard your heart, but guard your speech. And guard your speech. And uh, I thought it was interesting, Brother Chris, in your Sunday school class, Miss Tabitha, your husband, this last week, he took an orange and... Uh, he squeezed the juice out of the orange. By the way, he squeezed that, what, what came out of that? Orange juice. I mean, when you squeeze that orange, you're not gonna get lime juice or apple juice, you're gonna get orange juice, right? Amen. And so then he made the illustration that often when we get squeezed, pressured, what comes out of us is what's inside of us. So sometimes when we get pressured and squeezed, we say, we do, all of a sudden it's just what, is inside of us 
And what should be inside of us? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentle kindness, the fruit of the Spirit. And it's important. I remember, uh, this is years ago, probably 15 years ago, uh, there was a man that came to town and uh, pretty well known in uh, Bible-believing Baptists. He, he wrote a song that's in our songbook. Uh, one of the songs that's in our songbook. And I remember he came over to our house. He sang that song to our kids. It was really, really neat. And uh, then I remember there was a group that went golfing back then. And I got to go golfing in this group. And there's this preacher who's well-known who's uh, for song. And I remember going out. It was on Stumpy Lake Golf Course. I, I can almost picture the tee, the woods over there. And that preacher who'd written that song got up there and he swung his golf club and he hit the ball and his ball went straight right. I mean, it went right into the woods, deep in the woods. And it was shocking. I'm with another preacher and another preacher and this preacher and I'm there. The guy took his club, said some choice words and threw his club and he broke the club in half. And it shocked me. It shocked me that this man of God who could wrote, write such a, a wonderful song could have something like that happen. And do you, do you understand with it? Keep, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. In, in this one, remember, in, in the, uh, it said, put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Now, do, do you understand what happens? By the way, has that happened to you? If you're walking in the flesh, it can happen to you. But if you get in a habit of walking in the flesh, where you think it's okay to walk in the flesh, it wasn't surprising a few years later when that guy quit being an independent Bible-believing Baptist. It wasn't shocking to me because he had learned to walk in the flesh. And, and so I can't change him, I can't change you, but in me, I'm gonna guard my heart. I'm gonna guard my, 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 my lips and my mouth and what comes out of it. And that's what this, this is saying right here. It's important for us as Christians to guard our heart, guard our speech, and praise the Lord for the opportunity to do that. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. We're pretty much done. And uh, please get wisdom. Please get wisdom. Please get wisdom. Please get wisdom. I remember Brother Sinerco, Paul, we're revival. Do you remember the revival we had? And I'm waving as people come in. And you were going to pick some people up with a bus. And you uh, drove the bus someplace. And uh, we had just gotten a piece of property. And not to go into a lot of the details. But you might have taken a wrong turn and, uh, accidentally. But you, wouldn't, you didn't mean it. And, and somebody, not, a, not one of our church people, one of our neighbors came over to our church and met me out there in that parking lot, and he is cussing, he's cursing, he's foaming from the mouth and angry and upset. And right there, you, you know, I don't think he has a right to be angry, but I, I remember when he did that right there, and you know what, those, those situations, I didn't expect that. You run into situations in your work, in your life, where life just hits you. What do you do? You ask God, God give me wisdom, please give me wisdom. Please give me wisdom, please give me wisdom. And I did my best to diffuse that situation. I apologized. I said, sir, we didn't mean to. We'll never do that again. Well, we made a mistake. Please forgive me. By the way, he's half drunk. And uh, he still went away foaming, but I diffused it a little bit. And I was like, praise the Lord. And then it didn't end there because we got the revival coming. And if some of you remember that day, you drove by the back and they'd picked up these pylons and he moved all these pylons into the middle of our road. Some of you drove up to the, the, uh, the revival that night and you said, what in the world is that doing in front of the road right there? And then some of the kids noticed that and they tried to put it up and they began yelling at those kids. But, but the, the whole situation was a mess. But in that situation, I want to walk in the spirit. I need wisdom in how to deal with it. I need wisdom in how to deal with it. Please, Lord, give me wisdom. Please, Lord, let me walk in wisdom. Please get wisdom. This week, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Probably you're gonna have some situations that you run into this week, unexpected situations. And you know what you're gonna need? You're gonna need wisdom. I wanna encourage you. Here's a couple of things before we're done. Why don't you read a proverb a day? Ask God for wisdom. If any of you lack, lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You could start the morning, God, give me wisdom. God, give me wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Tomorrow is what day? Proverbs chapter number one. 
Or read Proverbs chapter number one tomorrow morning when you get up. Say, give me wisdom. Read Proverbs chapter one. And then look for wisdom in that that you can apply to your life. Get wisdom. Choose the right path. Guard your heart. Guard your mouth. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for this wisdom in Proverbs chapter four. Boy, oh boy, I needed it. I needed the reminder. And in truth, when we, we think of other people, Lord, often we all have failed. Help us to not get in the habit of walking in the flesh. If we go off that path for a moment, help us to get back on the path of the just. Please help us to get wisdom, Lord. I pray for these young folks, especially the young girls and the young, young men, to guard their hearts, guard their hearts from anything that would take them out of your will, Lord. I pray for the wisdom of for parents as they raise their children for you, guide them and direct them. I pray for the senior ambassadors. They're, oh, so much a part of our church and such an example. Uh, they, they have people following them. Help them to lead to that path of just. Lord, help us as we go the rest of this week to have that wisdom. Help us to choose the right path. Help us to guard our heart and guard our, our lips, Lord. We love you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen.